All right. Good evening, everyone. We are back here um, on the Sunday night, um, the 13th and week four of In Treatment with Uzu Adabu, um, HBO's In Treatment. So, and I, we're here with real life therapists. <laughs> I'm Dr. Charmaine Jackman, a psychologist in the Massachusetts area and the founder of InnoSight. And I'm here with some colleagues. I'll let them introduce themselves tonight. Um, go ahead, Kwame. Hi, I'm Kwame Dance. I am a PsyD uh, student candidate, doctoral candidate at William James College. I'm an intern at the Center for Multicultural Training in Psychology. So I'm the not quite doctor yet, but soon enough. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Shani. Hello, good evening, everyone. I'm Dr. Shawnee Turner. I am a clinical psychologist and a full-time faculty member at William James College. And Dr. Vanessa Prosper. Hi, I'm Dr. Prosper. I'm a counseling psychologist uh, with a private practice. Um, I'm a school-based clinician as well and adjunct faculty. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. So we've been meeting every week since this season four started. We're maybe about halfway through, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, and tonight was very, very, when we started talking backstage and had a lot of concerns about, about the sessions today. So our format is to, to share um, some things that we like first, and then we go into things that we had concerns about or kind of setting the record straight about what happens in therapy. So let's start with there. Let's, we're going to, we'll do it loud here first and then we'll um, debrief Colin. So in the session with Eladio, we see um, that ended rough last week, right? There was an abrupt ending, but he's back. You know, I think she was worried that, she, that he actually showed up. Um, and then within very quickly, the session ended abruptly based on some things that Brooke shared. And then we see it pick back up again later. She's carrying this concern about him and they, he calls back at another time and unscheduled time. So that was kind of a rough session, um, but we see a lot of con counter transference with her and this client um, because of what he represents um, him looking for a mom figure, her looking for a son figure, and he's he's hip to it too, right? He yeah. he's naming that that there's a this dynamic in their relationship. Mm -hmm. um, so, what what do you like about this? Anything that you liked, you thought was done well? From you know you know part of our goal here is to highlight you know what therapy actually looks like. Um, what are some things that the, the you know they get right in the in the in the display of um, these sessions, and you know what are things that we want people to know is, is not really accurate. So anything that you saw that you liked in this session with Eladio, I can see Kwame's ready to go. Yeah, because I, I want to get it out now in case somebody because there really wasn't that much. But um, ahead, I had to really pull. But um, when he tried to split um, between both his previous therapist and her to kind of get her to say that the other therapist was wrong or, 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 you know, she didn't go there with him. So I, I'd say mm -hmm. that's important. That's good. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So say more about that. Well, no, well, I'm sorry. She did, she did go there with the, the diagnosis. So, so, but in terms of um, her, it, it was the point where um, he was trying to ask her if the, if, the other doctor didn't care or or was it that she doesn't should i be mad at you should i be mad at her and she said you know i do think that it came from a place of caring and then he kind of rejected that too but mm -hmm. she could have just dove in deeper and and did the wrong thing and just really really gone uh wrong and strong against that that mm -hmm. other therapist mm -hmm. so that was a good mm -hmm. thing okay vanessa you have anything i'm trying to find something here. I would say the only thing I could find doesn't mean that it's the only thing because it's so much easier to see what she could have done better and what was problematic, I would say is clearly, yes, we know there's a lot of counter transference in terms of like wanting to, in terms of the parallel with having lost her son um, to adoption and all of that. But, you know, I do think she genuinely cares about him and she's trying to accept him as he is showing him unconditional positive regard trying to 
um, you know, empathize with them. I that's that's what I that's I saw as being positive, but there's just so much. Okay. So better. <laughs> I don't know if I should skip. Okay. Skip Dr. me. Dr. Shani says. So yeah. No. Her on this no. One. <laughs> don't. You don't have to. I don't. I don't. Um, because you're asking if the question is, what did you see good from this session? You can throw the whole session out. She, she she needs she needs to take a break. This type of behavior in session with your therapist, your therapist needs to step back and deal with the their mental health, their trauma, their um, lack of boundaries are seeping over into their clients and now impacting their client's ability to function. Mm -hmm. So the fact that we are seeing that, and now we, we're not just talking like some boundaries anymore. Mm -mm. This is hurting the client. This is ethics. Do no harm. This is getting to, this is getting at the heart. Of, so I don't have anything that I'm going to say, right. I'll point out nothing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, yeah, I mean, the, the session started out rough because well, she showed up. <laughs> she was there because she. I, what based on what happened, what it looked like, she was drinking before. She might have been partying the night before, right? He noticed that her earring wasn't there, you know, on. So there were some things that may have happened the night before that she might not have made the session. So well, she showed it was, up. It was that a good thing? <laughs> and then she um, showed up very. She, you know, she showed up almost proud to share the truth of the referral. And it went downhill from there because the way she was hoping to share it was I want to be honest about how I portrayed you and how I made this referral. And I'm concerned about your diagnosis. And it was just such poor wording to the patient. Yeah about how that was done how that even if that was your even if that clinically was your thought there's 10 other ways in which that could be explored with the patient in a way to look at symptoms and yep. the way to look at presentation rather than to blatantly say i do not believe your diagnosis for someone that's walking around with this diagnosis like that he thinks he has that is just like, I don't right. know where she got that from. So that was the part where he ended the session. So, yes. so let's break that down a little bit because so she, you know, she made this referral mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. as he had asked about to deal with his sleep and he suspects he has, he's been told he has bipolar di di um, disorder. Um, so she's questioning that diagnosis. Um, and, you know, again, they have that the session prior ended rough, right? And yeah. she did acknowledge, like, you know, we had a, a tough session before. Did she say, like, I don't, I was, I'm surprised no. you showed up. Did she say something to that effect? No. Um, no, he brought it up. He yeah. brought it up the yeah. fact that the session ended abruptly. She's and she was, brought it up. And she, it, it, it almost implied that she came late because she was like, well, were, were you waiting long? So I think she showed up late. Not yeah, was, you're right. Like, yes. <laughs> yep. You're right. Yep. One earring. Yep. Mm -hmm. Right. So, um, so yeah, so, <laughs> so she, she challenges this diagnosis with him, but you, you're saying absolutely the way that she presented it to him was not in a place that would hold this, this client. Um, she just bursts it out. There's no kind of preamble. There's no, like you said, talking about the symptoms or reviewing his symptoms exactly. um, or say, you know, I'm really trying to understand, you know, what you're sharing and I want to make sure that it's right. You know, there's no, nothing of that question. Like, I don't think you have this disorder, point blank. And what no is, release what of information either. What about a release of information to the place that he's saying that he got the diagnosis. How about in that week when you're making that call, you ask him for a release of information right. so that you can look at the notes or talk to the clinician that he worked with to get a sense as to what that work was like. Where did what were the symptoms presenting at that time? That's the work that that's that's why you go see 
a clinician. That's the 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 beauty of that. We have ways other than just challenging the client to gather information. We might look at your medical right. record. Right. right? Yeah. We we might look at the medical record. We talk to that past therapist. We gather all this information and then we present that to mm -hmm. the client. Yep. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Yeah. and Sorry. and for for the list for the listeners who who um aren't maybe clinicians. So bipolar disorder um, requires the presence of a manic episode or a, or there's two two levels of bipolar disorder. There's hyper and uh, there's hypermania, hypomania, bipolar one, bipolar two. But he could have been actively manic when he was seeing the previous set, uh, you know, therapist. So right. they may not be seeing, she may be seeing him at a different state in a different place. He could be you know, he's he could be manic tomorrow or it, hopefully we get to tomorrow. But and and she would be completely off in her con conceptualization of the client. So I agree, like just going back and doing your due diligence and talking to the old right. clinician, incredibly important. Or or if she doesn't have access to that, she's made a referral to a psychiatrist so she could wait till that happens and they could confer with each other and kind of see, take notes about wh where they see he lies. So I really like the timing of that did not make sense. Why you would say that to a patient when you're making a referral to another provider, it just didn't, didn't, didn't make any sense. Cause you would wait to come back and have all the information and just here, here's what we found after kind of working together. So it was just inappropriate. And then the client like ended the session abruptly, right? He's like, I don't want to hear this. Yeah, exactly. And the other thing I wanted to mention is to, relates to what you said, Shani, and just of like explaining other things too, just like mental health, medical disorders, same thing. Is there all the same more in terms of how it should be assessed? The same way your doctor, if your doctor wasn't sure, you went to a new doctor, and you have a diagnosis of diabetes or asthma and the doctor's not sure, they're gonna ask for your medical record. So it's the same thing with mental health disorder. You have to do your due diligence. You have to gather the information as, as um, Shani said, um, to figure out like, to really gather, the more, the more information that you have, the more you can get to the most accurate diagnosis or the, the most clarity about what's going on with the patient. Mm -hmm. And uh, like, what's, like what's said before too, just not only that, is that you need to, to really be clear about what it is before you even present that to the patient. Yeah. And the other thing I wanted to mention, which we had talked about last week, was like her thing with like not hearing her patients sometimes, mm -hmm. listening to what they want. And Eladio is really good and so perceptive and insightful because when she mentioned the, the, the psychiatrist, she was, he was like, whoa, whoa, wait a minute, this is not what we had agreed upon. And how am I gonna afford this? And I didn't even like her answer because she was like, mm -hmm. oh, you know, he, I'm just saying he's available to you. He, and then a lot of you like called her on it. Like, are you gonna pay for my session? Like, what's up with that? Like, right, right. She, she was just all over, um, all over the place. And I would agree in terms of like, yeah, you don't bring up and say, uh, I think I wrote it down. She said, I doubt, I have my doubt about the validity of your bipolar diagnosis without like, that's not, <laughs> you should mm -hmm. say, you could ask a lot of you like, what do you think about this diagnosis? What do you understand about it? Um, you know, based on what I've seen so far, I'm, you know, I'm not quite sure, or you further assess I'm for right. other symptoms. Yeah. yeah. Right. Cause in the work that she's been doing with him, she's not assessing, no. I mean, she's talking about his relationship with his mother. So I'm like, how are you even assessing whether he has bipolar di disorder not or not? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so then she is, she's disturbed by the way that ended. Mm -hmm. And she is carrying it with her throughout her day. We see her kind of carrying it with her throughout her day, which she would anticipate if something that major happened with this patient. Um, and then we see her pick back up. He calls where she's in the middle of this conversation with her partner about having a baby. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and she takes the call. I was surprised that the partner actually was actually insightful. Oh, I was yeah. Like, what? yeah, how did he see he, that? He saw what was going what on. What did you say? What What do you mean? So, you Do know, like he was expressing a frustration like, oh, I'm just looking at my phone because, you know, this, you know, this patient. And then the partner said, what's so special about that guy, that patient? I was like, you nailed it in terms of the counter transfer right, right there. So I thought yeah. I didn't expect that from you know the the partner. Yeah, yeah, 
Yeah. Um, so yeah, and I think she had to take the call. She could not take the call, right? After yeah. she'd left several messages for him to call her, she had to yeah. take this call. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, so, so yeah, so talk about like what, so then it's unfolding, you know, he's processing this thing with her now, or they're trying to process what they hadn't processed before. Um, what, what what are your thoughts about how that unfolded in, in that moment when he's by the pool where we saw this mm -hmm. opening scene in in um, the first session he's standing by this pool? Yeah, that's true. Well, <laughs> if anybody's been doing telehealth, which we all have to some extent, one of the first things you we have to, by law, ask is where the client is and disclose where we are. And I haven't seen her doing that with him in these sessions. Now, he may or may not be truthful about where he is, but it's her job to assess that. And she should have been assessing his safety and risk from jump. Um, I don't think she did that adequately. So just as a starting point. Especially for someone with bipolar who's, as Sean, you were saying, low on medication. Yeah. 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 He's out. So we see, and this this um, episode ends with a lot. Ladio getting into the pool. Yep, Ladio taking off all his clothes and getting into the pool. Mm -hmm. So if he got mm -hmm. in fully clothed, then we would be concerned. But the fact that he took off all his clothes, and I was even like, okay, is he going to submerge yeah. himself? Yeah. While he's on the phone because he yeah, has the air, air button, yeah. air I was I was like watching every detail. Then it kind of got cloudy and faded away. So we now yeah. have to wait until next week mm -hmm. or until they load these extra episodes. And I can't <laughs> promise anything because I may watch it. Um, but I I for me in listening to like this patient is so so insightful and so smart and. Like, I feel like he, in, in many situations, like in what he's describing, he has more insight than her. Mm -hmm. As the clinic, he's the client has more insight into the way she is managing him. And he's, yeah. he's showing her that sometimes you're treating me this way and sometimes you're treating me this way. You're confusing me. You mm -hmm. are confusing me. And he is right. Each week we have talked about that. He is absolutely right. It would be for someone that has symptoms of bipolar or true bipolar, this is confusing. Yes. Mm -hmm. you, you're, you're putting me on this kind of emotional <laughs> spiral. I don't know if, you, if you're trying to really care about me. And then if I open that door where you really care about me, then you close it. And I'm not really sure if I should go back in this door because you open that door. Like, why am I calling you by the pool at 10 o'clock when you told me that can't happen? You told me that you have boundaries and that yeah. I couldn't talk to you in this way, but now you're you're gonna keep texting me. Yep. It's confusing. It is, because he, he calls her on that, that the yeah. core boundaries, right? But he's like, Well, well, what am I to do? And he keeps insisting. Right. You know, but then but, she, yeah. sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, go I'll let you finish. Go ahead. No, I was gonna say, like when he was talking about the other therapist and then like his frustration or also where he felt abandoned and rejected. He's like, well, I thought she was my friend. So there was like already a lot of confusion there, yeah. right? And then she didn't take that opportunity to clarify, to like, you know, it's just, and this is showing you the harmful impact of like that poor boundary. Right. You were right. saying, Shannon, in terms of him being confused, do you care about me? Like, well, you know, and also like for him, the transference in terms of like feel, feeling um, dismissed by his own mother. Yeah. And the, the fact is when he called at back at 10 o'clock at night or whatever that was, it was not the, it should not have been continuing the session. Like nothing happened. Right. Mm -hmm. That should be an assessment. Are you okay? Um, mm -hmm. all right. So let's schedule a time, right. That was not the time to go into a session. No. Um, there was no assessment of his safety. I mean, okay you know, nothing, like nothing. So it was not, not even you know, a conversation. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, she should not have been carrying on the session. There was not the time. Yeah. yeah. I just would have liked her to also acknowledge, like when, when with any of the patients, yeah. 
when does she allow them to like bring those emotions into the session? Like imagine him, her, her answer the phone and say, I, I would like to talk about, you know, that you felt uh, frustrated enough in that moment that you needed to hang up. Exactly. And I'd like to own mm -hmm. whatever it was mm -hmm. in that moment that I caused you to, to be that frustrated. Like mm -hmm. I would process that and I would make, then I would do safety. Mm -hmm. And then I would say, okay, mm -hmm. what are the next times that we can meet to really allow us to have mm -hmm. some time to process through this? But that would also mean that I had insight into, I probably shouldn't have said that to him in the first place. Exactly. Yeah. I don't, I don't know that I would have process, processed it there. Um, I would have assessed for safety for sure. Um, Cause that's, that's our duty. Um, I feel like the more they process in that moment. Well, first of all, I was going to talk about boundaries, ba boundaries, <laughs> a lot of things. <laughs> There's a lot of Brooke, times Brooke boundaries, but has no boundaries. Brooke, Brooke has no boundaries, and we know that. But in terms of how the patients conceptualize boundaries, boundaries are it, it gives us a sense of like as patients, it gives them a sense of expectations. They have um, they, they know that they're that there's control when they're going to those deep spaces in which they don't necessarily have feel that they have control. They know that this person got me. They got me in this mm -hmm. container, um, mm -hmm. and when you as as clinicians when you start bending those and breaking those then that feels that stirs up anxiety in the client that stirs up it's confusing, um, yeah makes it extremely confusing for them and um so i that would be my logic for not doing any kind of processing outside of the risk assessment in that moment and i would have i wouldn't have picked up if i weren't ready to have that conversation i don't know if she had resources ready to go i don't know if she had a plan in place it doesn't seem like it she should have probably done a plan with him already um given how he's been presenting but you know well also the other thing when um you know we often mention like where is her ability or capacity you know to self-reflect on what's been going on in the session, what was wrong, right? Mm -hmm. Because when her partner, I don't know what to call him, um, said, you know, when she was, you know, venting about her patient, not for sure, like her, like her worry about Eladio, and he was like, well, what did you, like, what did you do wrong? And she wouldn't go there. Yeah. 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 She didn't acknowledge that at all. She was no. almost offended. Yeah. Like, exactly. why would I do anything wrong? Why would I do anything wrong? Yeah. Yep. yeah. It why? didn't even cross her mind, like, oh, maybe. Yep. And don't doing. you think that's such a dangerous place to be in as a clinician, as oh, probably as anyone, but in any field that you don't have that much insight to know that you can not be perfect at this, that you can do things that, oh, you're off one day or, mm -hmm. you know, you say the wrong thing or you meant to say it this way or the perception of how that was taken was not what you intended. Right, so you got to go do right. some damage control and fix that up. It's almost like she's like, "What? Do you, why would you even ask that?" Yeah. Right, and so it's important to have you know peer supervision, group supervision with other professionals that you are, you know, or you're you're learning, you're continuing to grow as a profession. You don't just stop. Um, so yeah, so there, you know, we know that she is having a difficult time, and definitely for her, she should. You know, hopefully, I don't know she she is. She doesn't have the insight. But for you clinicians out there or people looking to, you know, if you're on a path to being a clinician, definitely making sure you have people in your circle that you can talk to and recognizing when you're struggling with some personal issues, that that will be some time to, you know, connect with a supervisor, with your own therapist. Um, and for for folks that are getting start out, started out in the field like me, um, I've found it to be a a huge indicator if I'm uh, that that there might be a boundaries issue if I'm thinking about my patients when I'm at dinner with like <laughs> with a with my friends or taking them home with me. Like that's I mean sure we we're humans so we care about people and we're in this field because we care about people. But you really shouldn't be taking your home. Even the fact that she was processing with her partner at dinner, like huge issue for me so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's a great point so predictions for this um for this case 
What do you think is going to happen next week? And I think I know that they're supposed to be dropping the rest of the sessions tomorrow. So we're going to have to figure out what our schedule is because <laughs> I need to see what's going to happen. I almost I almost watched the preview for next time, but I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. Good. I don't know what happened. Oh, I turned it off. I, 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 myself. I, don't think, I don't think he's going to die. I, I think just like there was a function for his, his, you know, his belief that he had bipolar disorder or whatever, I think that there's a function for this attempt that he's making, or per perhaps if he's making an attempt, we don't know. Yeah. And I think that's um, that's going to draw her back in, and I think it's going to be another boundaries issue session for her. Right, right. So, and it could be symbolic, right? The symbolic of him going back into the womb, the water and stuff, rebirth. I mean, there could be all kind of symbolism around that. Um, but clearly, a patient that she has a lot of the counter-transference is just it's just digging deeper and deeper her, her into them some holes. Um, that is really, you know, um, impacting her insight around how to really care for this patient. So, yeah. Okay. Um, Colin. So, <laughs> Colin, Colin, Colin. So Colin comes in. This is this is the last of his four sessions that he was court ordered to do as part of his release from prison. Um, and he had invited, he had said he would invite his ex-wife into the session. <laughs> he is a trip. Yes, um, and so we learned, unfolded, he was waiting for her to come. This, the ex-wife, he wanted to wait, you know, talk about her, then come to find out he hadn't really invited her. She wasn't coming and unfolds her preg her attempt to get pregnant and he had a like and she kind of was very direct with him like stop lying to me like stop i don't know if you're lying to me or you're lying to yourself but you need to stop right so she was very direct in that way with him um and again we've talked about this uh, you know the way that she ends her sessions are just awful 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 i got some so <laughs> I got so, my ethical standards like right in front of me. I'm breaking out the book. So, there. what did you like about this session? Let's start there. Vanessa, you want to go? Um, I'm thinking. Oh my god, it's so hard every, every time. <laughs> um, I think, as we had talked about, like um, prior to beginning this, the recording, just like the, her, the fact that she was able to challenge him. Mm -hmm. yeah, to, to, for him to go deeper and actually like be more honest and be more connected with like what is really going on with him. Um, I thought that was, that was good. And she wasn't like afraid to go there with him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How about for you? Uh, good night, buddy. Sorry, my I son thought, was good night. <laughs> no, it's okay. I, I thought that, um, I actually thought there was like a nice genuine moment in in the beginning in the driveway. Like I know she could see like, okay, this person's not coming. I, I think that, <laughs> you know, like this, you know, <laughs> yeah, the therapist, true. the inner's like, okay, you know, I, I wanted to have this time to process with you anyway, but she didn't, she could have no boundaries and kind of mess that up. But I think she went out there warm. I think she went out there very encouraging. And I think she was soft enough to just kind of lead him to say, hey, you know, why don't we go in and just start and kind of see where she comes. And I also think that I noticed her, she tried like maybe three times to shift him. Well, actually, no, I wouldn't. I didn't like that, actually. Um, <laughs> <laughs> because I think by the second time, the way she was doing it was too abrupt. Mm -hmm. She, she, she's, she's almost just like, a little bit shy of having some really good good clinical skills and shifting the client's <laughs> ability to focus on this thing that they're kind of stuck on versus being able to explore this area where you need to be at, right? And I think that there's a, a finesse to that, not as abrupt as she's making it. 
Right. And I, I would say that there might have been at least one, maybe she got through two times of being able to, in a nice way, suggest to him that we, what if we focused on this? And then I think it turned. I think it, it wasn't helpful. It was like, you know, she's not here, so I'm not going to focus on that. And I was like, wait, that's not what you say. No. You know? <laughs> I, I noticed that too. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. You I think that? she was, was really, bad. she was really like, I think she was mindful of time. Like this is my last session with this guy and yeah. he wants to spend all his time well, talking about this person who's not here. Well, that's, and so I've just been confused this entire time about the purpose of, <laughs> of their work. Is she there for treatment or is the, is she there to assess? Assess. Assess. You know, so in that case, I'm not too mad at her being, her, her, her level of directness because she does have to get to clear assessment by the end of their, their session. Now, she's kind of dabbled with treatment, though. So it's like, you got to be clear. Like, you got to be clear to him. You got to be clear to yourself and make that known. That if, you're not, if you're not there for treatment, you're not there for treatment. You're there for assessment. So, right. Yeah. Right. I think that's a confusing thing because it's supposed to be some kind of assessment, but she's been treating him. Yeah. Right? So... You know, similar to Lottie, Lottie saying, I want to be assessed for my medication thing, but she's treating these childhood issues, which, sorry yeah. for, you know, <laughs> but she's treating him like she has her own agenda. And I think in this session, Colin said, Still, like, you're not listening to me. Yes. Um, right? He said that a few times. Mm -hmm. But again, he was also was not being like, he was not being honest. I mean, he was, <laughs> he's, he's a trip. So, okay, should we move into what we didn't like? Because yeah. we're like, <laughs> So how, did she call him? She called him a narcissist, right? Yes, yeah, she did. Yes. She said, like, she, <laughs> she said she's gotten to the point in her career where she doesn't feel like she needs to work with narcissists because they're exhausting. <laughs> like, Ooh. what? Like, how do you sit as a patient? But even before that, her <laughs> affect changed to get out. Oh, she was pissed. Her affect, she. Yeah. It got to the point where it was so uncomfortable. He was not looking at her. He was not looking at her. He was talking and he wouldn't look at her because if the camera had panned, her face was just, oh, it was so bad. Before mm -hmm. she called him a narcissist. So she's like, and he, he had asked her a question and she just stood there. I was like, oh, so you're not you're not answering the patient anymore. <laughs> so what triggered her? Is something that this whole thing about the baby and yeah, I think the line, oh, right? Yeah. The line, right? He had a vasectomy. He and... he blurted that out, and she got stoned. Oh, she got this. But he, but yeah, <laughs> because yeah. it's a it la the the two sessions ago, he spent twenty minutes talking about <laughs> them being in the woods and having this child, and you know, this is we wanted this. That's how if we watch yeah. the videos back. Like we played this and then played mm -hmm. session two. This man sat and, and in detail talked about, you know, we really wanted this. We worked we hard and I was sad yeah. that this, this wasn't something that we could do. And, right. you know, we didn't do all of the, you know, IVF type stuff. We did, you know. Which I'm like, which is like, why wouldn't you do IVF? Because they, she didn't everything. believe in it. We had to use healers oh, right. and rocks and, you know, mm. trees. That's what he kind of made it feel like. Like, it was all this. <laughs> that's how he said it. Like, not me, but, like, that's how he said it. Like, oh, you're going to use a tree and a rock. And even then, to, I, can, I can imagine why her affect was that way. But this is all internal stuff. This is. I'm right. over here searching for this son to be connected with, and you've got this woman. And then it dawned on her, like, oh, she's not coming because you didn't even ask her. You're mm -hmm. lying about this. Mm -hmm. You've lied about so much. What is real? Mm -hmm. None of this right. is. None of this. And but I think the other piece. Oh, sorry, Kwame. The other oh, piece no. that I think she was reacting to, because Paul had answered. A, was it Paul or Adam? What's what's her partner's name? Uh, I think it's Adam. Mm -hmm. Adam. Mm -hmm. um, Adam had just answered to have a baby with him. And this older guy, you know, I think there was also some reaction that she was having to, to this as well. So I think all her life up in these things. Um, and, you know, we don't, we still don't know kind of like what led to 
her and Adam not being together. I mean, I know, like, I feel like with, um, what's the thing, with Colin, he's so deceitful that way, right? Because he keeps lying. And I wonder if, like, again, the counter transference, like, yet another man being deceitful, not, you know, here he another is. Another white like, man. Yeah. Well, yeah, there's that too. I mean, yeah. Let's just go there. <laughs> yeah. Well, I heard dad, right? Or her dad being deceitful and her narcissist. Isn't her dad? I mean, she kind of talked about her dad being a narcissist too. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so she was pissed. I mean, she was pissed. And I like that she called him on his stuff, though. It's like, mm -hmm. you yeah. said that you tried everything, but you had a vasectomy. Like, yeah. what the hell? Like, yeah. help me. She's like, she's like, help me make, help me make sense of that. I love her. Yeah, it's, I, I think sense. she's, honestly, I think she's a much better clinician. Well, yeah, depending on what her role is, a much better clinician to Colin than she is, um, than she was. Yeah, yeah, yeah maybe. Of, yeah, because um, you know, if she's conceptualizing him as having narcissistic personality disorder, um, which you know, when I was throwing out my differential last time, I, I, I threw that one out. We've been thinking that possibly. Yeah. That direct, you know, confrontation is is necessary. Is, necessary yeah. for treating for that treatment so um and if she's assessing like i said i mean you know you're trying to figure out if he's lying to see if he's lying about other things so I, i'm not mad at what she did in certain instances i'm mad because she broke a a key ethical code if she was providing treatment of any kind and we'll get to that though but Unless y'all want me to go there now. Yeah, All right, cool, let's go. Yeah. I was like holding it because I was like holding it. I'm prepared because I'm like, I want to go to ethical. No, nah, there we go. <laughs> so, so. All right, so I'm reading from the APA ethical principles uh -oh. and standards. Okay. School lesson, lesson, lesson. So, okay. so this is okay. so this so so this is yeah. No, I'm in school, so you know that. But um, all right, so terminating therapy, right? So uh. psychologists terminate therapy. Uh, when it becomes reasonably clear that the client slash patient no longer needs the service, is not likely to benefit, or is being harmed by continued service. So that's mm -hmm. one. Psychologists may term, terminate therapy when, when threatened or otherwise endangered by the client or patient or another person with whom the client or patient has a relationship. That's not there. Except where precluded by the actions of the client or patient or, or third party payers. Prior to the termination, the, psycholo the psychologists provide pre-termination uh, pre counseling and suggest alternative services for providers. So she didn't do that. And that's my issue. Like she didn't give him any options for next steps at all. She let him walk out the door and very with, with nothing with nothing like not like okay we're My gonna follow up. up i'm gonna follow up with the court like i'm gonna do something like where's he going right. i don't know where he walked I, up i was he, expecting right. him to like run up on her or something i don't know where he's at. I was <laughs> saying, like, like what, what what did she decide right she was supposed yeah. to what did she decide he yeah. didn't know what what she decided yeah and then like we were talking about we've been talking about for the past few weeks is like she doesn't wrap it up at the end of the session like at least be like listen this is our last session this is what's gonna happen next. This is what you know. What I think, you know, based on my like something. Like, I, I it was like you know, a teenager telling a guy like, "Boy, bye." Yeah. Bye. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm done with that you. Is not that like, was a break. That like, was a breakup. I'm, I'm I'm done with you. I'm done. That was a breakup. That wasn't termination. That was a breakup. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And Kwame, I like what you just said because I definitely was thinking that first of all. I would have went to the door and locked it when he walked out. Like for, I would have ended the session that way, oh, but she just cool. walked outside. I'm like, he is going to come and yet. knock you out because I wanted to knock her out. So if I wanted to knock her out. I was like, he's coming, right? <laughs> Are we going to see that? And I didn't turn the TV off because I didn't want y'all to yell at me about watching the, it continue. So I had to shut it off. So I, I think I got to the credits and I had to shut it off, but I, that's not safe. No. This is her home. We also know she's in her oh, home. Said, right, right. You, yeah. There's certain patients right, you don't right. have. The home. patient walks out and you're just outside, like processing. Like, no. Will you shut the door? Will you lock it? Will you make sure the patient has driven off? That, like, that's also a part of treatment, anyway, right? Yeah. That you walk the it patient is. out. 
There's a walkout yeah. process. There's yeah. see you next week. Look forward to hearing from you. Mm -hmm. I will be in touch with your, your probation officer. There's some part of the walkout. Yeah. The fact that she always has never, has never with mm -hmm. any client that we have seen mm -hmm. done any type of walkout, done any type of closure, ended a session in a way that we have been trained to end a session. Yeah. No matter, yeah. not even termination. And Right, right, but like, this is not just the end of session. This is the end of your fourth. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. You can't just say your time's up. Like it was just up, not and bye. appropriate. Like because he just stay there. She's like, no, bye. Right, bye. Like, go. It's like this is where it comes from. Like no matter how you feel about the thing, it's not about you. You got to keep your feelings in check and do right. your job. Right, and yeah, granted, she was upset with him, and he, you know, he's a he's. Yeah. He's a client who, you're right, he's going to need more than four sessions, yeah. you know, but he's invested in the lies that he tells, right? He's invested in those lies and um, he, he, it's, yeah. So that was, but that was, that was not appropriate in, by any means to just mm -hmm. say your time's up after yeah. the end of four sessions. We know that this is his last session. Yeah. Um, and I think she was mad because he wasn't really like, following what she wanted to do. I mean, she clearly had a vision for what how she wanted the session to go and he was not playing into that at all. Right. Even up until, I think she really got frustrated towards the end because even after their kind of back and forth exchange with him, with her, like I think that someone had said this already, like I wasn't um, truly upset. I thought that at this point in what they were both communicating, she was being blunt, she was being direct. Had she had done that the first session, this might be a different situation, right? Very she would have been direct about, okay, we need to get here. Here's the information I need. She'd have been asking all the right questions. The fact that on the last session, you're finding out all of this like truth is absolutely an issue because he's trying to present a certain way. And then even up until she said goodbye to him, he was still trying to couch it. Like, I am trying to change in here. Mm -hmm. I am doing my best. I am, she's still, she don't but listen to, she's not believing you. She doesn't believe you. This is not compelling. It doesn't seem like mm -hmm. she's convinced that you have changed, right? Or, or mm -hmm. that you're wait, you're spending your energy trying to convince her of something because right, of the court order. Right? right. He kept saying, I want you to like me. I want you to yes. like me. What, mm -hmm. what was that about? Like, but I think, that that's, was, I think that's, that's real, though. I thought that was a very real moment from him because who doesn't? Who doesn't but I want think it's manipulative. Like him? But there, he, there's a little manipulation. Of course. That. And that's why it becomes disordered. Um, however, I do think when he was saying, who doesn't want want to put their best face forward? Who doesn't want? I do think that there is yeah. some, some truth to that. I think we all have. Well, I think at least most of us have a little bit of that in us. Um, and, you know, he just has a lot more, which is why no, he's in treatment. Like, we do from it, but at the same time, just like keeping in mind, like the personality disorder at the same time. Absolutely. He's very smart. That's how oh, he's yeah, going yeah. Right? yeah, but, you know, I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm, you know, I'm not that, app, you know, I'm not a not liar. I'm this, I'm that. So we also have to be careful of that. And that reminds me also of another thing, which is in, in, you know, in the codes of ethics as well, we don't really know what's like her training, right? right so I think that in terms of like, when we feel as clinician, like I can say for myself, like I'm not an expert in personality disorders. Like I know what it is, but I don't, I really need to be trained and right. know what I'm doing because it's very tricky with personality Work. disorders. And then with Brooke, is she specialized in that? Could she, can she really handle Colin? So. Right. Yeah. So one thing you're naming is that really how that we there are a lot of disorders out there. And part of our training, we, we learn we specialize in certain things. Right. We may be generalists in a lot of things. Right. But if we're really going to dig deep on a particular issue, we want to have more expertise in it. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a great point in that we're not everybody's not going to be able to treat everything that you walk through. Yeah. And there's a lot of that. What when I work with therapists, a lot of the work we do is like, how do you find your niche, right? What is your niche? Who are the patients that you're good at? And focus on those. It's so important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but something, Vanessa, something you said earlier is like, or maybe Kwame, we all said it, but he's very <laughs> smart. And I love the comment he made because she was like, I don't, I haven't lied in here. And he's like, how's your back, Brooke? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love that. And she was like, 
<laughs> you know? Got me. That was, I love that comment. That but yes, he is, very, and that's why I think there's so much manipulation. Like, mm -hmm. he knows what he's doing. Absolutely. At every point of the way, at every step of the way, I think he knows exactly what he's doing. Mm -hmm. And I think I had asked this question early on, and I think you guys give me some side eyes, but like, are there <laughs> times where there are clients that you don't like or clients that you don't believe? Yes. And yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's hard. It's hard. So we're talking about special. I do work a lot with personality disorders, but um, I'd say early psychosis um, is is kind of my jam in terms of um, my clinical work. Um, so it's it's difficult because there can be ulterior motives or secondary gain for having for carrying a certain diagnosis, particularly depending on the set the setting. So right now I'm working in a forensic setting, but I'm also working in assessment settings outside and in which people can get some sort of gain, um, whether it's legal or not. And um and 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 it's tough, you know, sometimes I mean it's a big debate because if you're working in a forensic space, that's exactly what you're doing. You're assessing to see what people are, you know, if people are lying. So that's what you're looking for. So if she was doing that, then that makes sense. But, you know, you do want to take your client's word word for them, even if you don't really believe, even if they're over endorsing symptoms and they're saying that they're hearing things. What are you what are you supposed to do? They really could be. Um, and but, I think that depends on your role too, right? Are you an yeah. evaluator or are you a therapist? Exactly. Right? That's, That's also treatment different. versus. And when yeah. I'm and when I'm my evaluator role, I am holding everything open. I'm not. I am not taking everything you tell me as truth, and I need to corroborate that with other information. Absolutely. So, um, but yeah. So is Colin coming back? Are we going to see Colin again? That's the million dollar question. I Maybe. hope that they give us some closure. I, yeah. I don't need to see another one of these sessions, but <laughs> what I would like to see is what does she write? What does she actually recommend? Mm. Um, how is that information delivered to Colin? Because someone should be telling Colin what Brooke is saying, mm -hmm. right? Does he have to learn that from the, the probation officer? Like mm -hmm. I'm hoping, I'm hoping for the audience that there's some closure in what did she gather from that and what is she going to say? Because what we know is that it was four sessions and there was some type of assessment. There's some type of recommendation. Well, right. what, what does that mean? That's so vague. Like what? <laughs> well, if he didn't get closure, why would we get closure? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Is she going to show up I mean, in the court and testify? I don't know. <laughs> what I'm do you curious where do? this will go. I'm curious yeah. where this will go. But there will be some other thing. It's not going to be left there. So yeah. So, so what's the next back thing? In some form. Yeah. Okay. Um, I hope. Yeah. So did she? Did you notice if she was drink? So Adam was drinking. Did she, was she not drink? Yeah, I, I yeah she had a drink. We were drinking. She did have a drink. But okay. was she drinking? So, what was it? Water? Because he had offered her sock, and she said, "No, I don't need." To I didn't even sock. think about that. But she, so she picked up this phone with with a lot of you drunk too. Or yes, she was I don't think oh she was God. drinking. I don't think she was drinking. She had a water. I thought, I thought her water. drink had an olive in it, so I assumed it was a drink. Dang. I, I thought I have to go back and watch. Like I was thinking about that too. I knew she poured. Like, was it sake that she poured for him, right? Oh yeah, and they were talking about sake. They, yeah, yep. mm -hmm. and I know she had something in her glass. Yeah, but her I glass had an olive. And the way she was sipping it, it wasn't water, a sparkling water. She was sipping it like she was <laughs> sipping really. another form of alcohol. Like maybe she didn't mm -hmm. want his sake, but she had something with an olive in her cup, mm -hmm. and oh, she was God. sipping slow. So I assume she was drinking. Oh my God. So what was the arrangement with Rita? Did she say she wasn't going to drink anymore or? No, she did not agree to not oh, drink. Oh, no, no. It was, I'm going to be your friend that drinks. Yes, that's it. And you're going to still be my friend, please. Because I need my friend. I don't need my, you know, sponsor. sponsor. Mm -hmm. I don't want you as my sponsor. I just want you to be my friend at this moment. And Rita said, okay. So now she's drunk texting her client and got in a session while she's inebriated. This I'm not saying she's drunk. I'm just saying she's drinking. But yeah, yeah, yeah. She was drinking. I don't know, but drinking. I don't know. Come on. But clearly she was with Eladio. She seemed like she was a little disorganized that morning. Absolutely. She got there late and 
Adam was still there yeah. and like, yeah. oh, you have to go because I have my patient coming. So mm. not planning well. So and he you can see her there. on Rob, right? It's on, <laughs> and even her here wasn't as put together, but you can oh, see her slowly like unraveling, so, right? Slowly unraveling. Yeah. Or maybe not so right. slowly. I have, I have a quick question. So if you're a clinician and you notice this kind of behavior from one of your colleagues, like how do you how do you handle that? What be which behavior? Which particular behavior? Everything or any, any all everything? Like just just you see a you see somebody unraveling and and breaking all kinds of boundaries and ethical uh, codes and principles. I don't know that you might depends on. How, I don't know that I would see that necessarily. Mm. What if you? What if the client? What if? What if work together? Yeah. So what? What? Yeah. What if? What if a lot? Um, a lot of you goes to um, the psychiatrist and sort of discloses some of that. I know it's a different discipline at that point, but but I'm just I'm just curious. How do you handle that if if something ethically um, questionable comes comes across your way about a colleague? I think you you hopefully you're in a spot where there's some supervisors or a director of management um, that you could kind of bring that to. Yeah. Um, I definitely that's why I was trying to say, well, what in what context were you saying? Okay. Like, because I think that I won't see what happens in the session. Yeah. I will only hear what my patients are saying are happening in those in sessions. Session. Like I've definitely have had. Um, on a on a on a very different level, like therapeutic mentors that have been, you know, not good with boundaries, and and their boundaries are a little different than the therapy sessions. So having to have those conversations, I have had had psychiatrists, um, just uh, on some on on some racial levels, not be mm -hmm. um, attuned with clients, and that's just a conversation with a director because mm -hmm. it's not um, it as another employee with my colleague. It's not my job or responsibility to kind of go mm -hmm. to the actual person and have that conversation. I bring that to my supervisor, um, the director, at the time it was the director that I talked to and really just disclosed with the patient's consent mm -hmm. that this mm -hmm. is what had happened. Um, so I've had to do that a couple of times, but I think a lot of the stuff that we're seeing through Brooke, if a patient doesn't come to another clinician and say that, then we're not gonna, know. Never know. We're not gonna know that. We're yeah. not gonna know that she is drunk in her session that she her personal life is impacting her ability to function in the session because we're not in those sessions right so, right. so um, given, given that i just want to say like groups like this are incredibly important in the fact that you know um and, and and like you said, Dr. Turner, having having you know groups and and people and checks and balances because we have to hold hold each other accountable too. And I think most Absolutely. good clinicians do, and and that's what you're speaking to. So um, yeah, yeah, it's a good question. Yeah, definitely. It definitely is yeah. a good question. Yeah, and I agree. Um, so yeah, if it was someone bringing it to a peer supervision space or someone yeah. I was supervising. Definitely, we would have that conversation about. Mm -hmm. Here's what I'm seeing. I think it would be helpful for you to go see a therapist. You know, I would give some recommendations. Um, I'm trying to think if I've so when it's come up where a, a patient has said something, um, like they've had experience with a prior clinician, I often will like just educate them about their rights. If it's something you felt yeah. that really was yeah. uncomfortable. <laughs> you know, there's a process where you can report them to, you know, like, you know, you can share your concerns with the licensing board. Um, so I've given people that information. I've never had anything egregious to the point where I um, have filed on my, uh, my, you know, made the complaint oh my myself. Uh -huh. um, definitely I've thought about it, right? But I think, you know, it's also in a space where you're not in that session, it's really hard to know what actually happened and you know mm -hmm. people perceive things you know yeah. in different ways and so i you know i don't want to sit in judgment of you know some right. clinician's decision or or what it is but i also want people to know like you one you don't have to go back to a space that is uncomfortable for you and if you feel that someone has done some, something to harm you 
then here here's a pathway for you to, to address that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right. I this was um, we went over our usual time, but my goodness, it was needed. So much to unpack. There was a lot. There was a mm -hmm. lot to unpack in this session. Um, so we'll be back tomorrow night, um, yeah. Monday to debrief Layla and her session with Brooke. Maybe she will go see Paul. You know, she needs to go see Paul. Come on, Brooke. Um, we'll be on Instagram tomorrow. So we'll mix it up a little bit. So thank you. And Johnny, I know we won't see you tomorrow, but. No, but I'll be with you guys in spirit. And I definitely will probably watch. So cool. okay. I will be watching we'll and then I'll be with you guys, okay? Sounds, yeah. sounds good. And we'll all figure right. out the schedule because all the all the shows are supposed to drop. So we'll figure out how to how Keep to going. we won't maybe we won't have to do these late nights. <laughs> be That'll be nice. <laughs> all right. Good night. All everyone. right. Take care. Bye. All right, so.